hi everyone welcome back to my channel it has been the longest time I feel like I'm starting every video off like it has been the longest time because it actually has I think that my last video this is the part two to my part one which was like a year ago it's really taken me this long to post this video and I think I've just been trying to avoid it because I just don't, I get really emotional talking about it. So I am currently pregnant um, again with my second baby, show you if you can see, he is, it's a boy and he is super, super active. I feel like he kicks way more than Iverson did. And it's just the craziest time, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this one because I feel like they're just totally going to clash with like their times and sleeping patterns and stuff. But yeah, so this is going to, my, going to be my second baby. This is my sixth pregnancy, um, which means I've had four miscarriages in the past. <clears throat> and I have gone about this pregnancy the same as I did with Iverson so I've got a stitch currently in to hold my cervix closed um, there's a lot more into that I don't know if I want to go into that with this video because this is gonna be a long video I want to try and keep it short I don't want to go into it too much just because I feel like I'm gonna bore you guys with my all my stories so I had two early miscarriages um, it was 2014 and 2015. One was a blighted ovum, which is just one of, it's just an early pregnancy complication. Um, my doctor told me that 60%, no, not even, I think it was like 70 to 80% of early miscarriages are unexplainable. So it just happens. And so that's what happened with my second one. They didn't really give me um, an explanation as to why I miscarried. Um, so then I had uh, fallen pregnant again in 2016 with my son, his name is JJ. Um, he was born while, uh, he was born at 19 weeks and three days. Um, my water broke with him and I don't know why, but I went into the hospital and they were just like, yes, the water has definitely broken, but I haven't gone into labor yet. So they kept me in hospital and I was on bed rest for two weeks in hospital. Um, so from 17, 17, 18, 19 weeks, I was in hospital <clears throat> and they just had me on, um, you know, antibiotics to try and not get an infection or anything um, and pretty much every day I think it was just so it was challenging because every day they had a doctor coming in telling me that my baby wasn't going to make it um, at this stage that I'm at with my pregnancy most babies won't make it so we can we can go you we can give you some medicine so you can go into labor and you can have the baby just to fasten the process pretty much because they were just pretty much saying like there's no point in you being on bed rest in hospital if your baby isn't going to make it anyway like i had doctors probably three or four doctors would come in every single morning and it was right before visitor visiting hours um and they would just tell me, you know, like the um, the risks that I that I could get, and and what could happen to me, and you know, it's not worth it. And even if my baby was to to survive, it would be a long journey for my baby to be healthy, and and all of that. Um, but at that time, I had joined a group on Facebook, and it was like a support group with thousands of other women that have gone that had the same thing happen to them 
as well um, on this group and so I was reaching out to them like three or four times a day and I seen them telling them about these doctors and and um, they didn't really they kind of gave me hope and so there were some women on that page that were posting uh, photos and stories about their babies that were born at that stage and you know it was a long journey but they're fine like they, they, they took photo, photo they took photos of their babies at like four years old and they were fine and like smiling and stuff so sorry I get so puffed out um yeah so I just felt like I had hope and I couldn't give give up you know I I I believed that as long as my baby's still inside and I'm, as long as I'm not getting any infection, then we still have another chance. We still have every day to to look forward to, you know. So for two weeks, yeah, two weeks, they were just in every day trying to remind me that there are risks. And then I think by the second week, they were just like, okay, if you decide to get an infection, if your temperature goes over, if you get a, the slightest fever, we are going to induce you, you're going to go into labour and we're going to get this baby out of you because you are more um, at risk at this point. And so I was doing everything to stay healthy. I got out on the Sunday, it was the second week on the Sunday, no, Friday, Thursday or Friday I got out of hospital and they put me on strict me on strict bed rest um, I came out of hospital and then for two days I was at home on bed rest I ducked out to the shops with my husband and this is where I feel like could, I, could things have changed because you know I was supposed to be on bed rest but I was literally at the shop for like five minutes and from when I hopped in the car to the whole time I was at the shops I was getting these really bad like stomach aches and they were just coming and going and I didn't really think too much of it because my doctors were saying because I was getting cramps anyway in hospital and they would tell me because I have no water or fluid around my baby I'm gonna feel baby more um, when he moves around when he kicks and stuff it's gonna be a bit more painful so I didn't think that it was too serious like these pains and so I had a certain I had a sudden urge to go to the toilet I needed to do a number two and so I <clears throat> told my husband, I was like, okay, quickly, like, I just need to quickly do a shit. I'm going to go to the toilet. This was like at 8.30 at night. Okay, I'm just warning you guys, this gets very TMI. So if you get creeped out or freaked out by weird or full-on stories, then don't watch the next two, three minutes. I sat on the toilet and I felt like I needed to do a poo like all, like that feeling in your muscles like down there just felt like I needed to push so I did a little push and then something came out and I felt it come out of the front part like the front side not the back side and I'm just like what the, like, what, what, what the fuck was that and I, I heard oh, and I think that's like the most that was the most traumatizing Thing was hearing like a, a hit like something bang like a bang on the um, on the toilet bowl and I looked in the bowl and I can just see like a cord I can see that something is hanging in the toilet and I just screamed like I screamed so loud I screamed so loud I was so traumatized because I can see my baby in the toilet bowl. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Huh? I was doing so good. What? 
I screamed so loud because I knew Alan was waiting outside of the toilet. So, and I couldn't, I could not grab him out of the toilet. I don't know why. I was just so, I was so traumatized. Um, yeah, and so Alan came running in the toilet and I opened the door and I was just like, the baby's in the toilet. Just like get it out, please. Like, I can't. I can't even look. Like I don't want to believe it because I've been so positive the whole time. I was in hospital, you know. I just couldn't believe. Like, is this this is really happening? And it's just me and you, my husband. <laughs> Alan's outside watching a movie. So they don't like. It. Yay, what are you doing? Refocus me. Yeah. Um, I was pretty much just like, get the baby out. Like, I can't, I don't know what to do. So he grabbed, he got the baby out. And because, you know, I've got my, I still got my pants around my ankles. So I didn't know what to do. I just laid on the floor. And thank goodness it was at that time. Because, like, <laughs> if it was during the day and that happened with, like, women in the toilet and kids and stuff I don't know what I would have done um, but because it was just me in there like it was like a horror movie like there was no one there so we were literally like screaming like help like someone help us I think Alan didn't want to leave to like he didn't want to run off and find help or anything so we just sat on the floor with our little baby and he was so like he was still alive he was still breathing we could like see his little chest just breathing come on bro Iverson has a TV in his room and he watches YouTube <laughs> and the volume is like to the top it's like very loud anyways so yeah after sitting and like screaming we're both kind of screaming for help the security guard came in and poor guy like I don't think he realized what he was gonna walk into so he walked in the toilet and he was just like, whoa, like, what the hell? So he went out and called the ambulance and stuff. He called the ambulance um, and we just waited there. The, the ambulance came, they gave like this little tube, it was like an air tube and, you know, they didn't have, they don't have anything for premi babies or anything. So. They were kind of just, they were just telling me to put that knee his face mm -hmm. to help him breathe for oxygen. Um, we went to the hospital and that was it. They just put me in a room and they were just like, Ooh, just spend your last few hours with the baby and, you know, pretty much like he's not going to make it anyway so just spend your last few time few hours with him before he passes away because they were like oh is he is, has he passed away yet and i was like no he's still breathing and they were like oh okay like just like they're like okay we'll just wait for it pretty much like it was just such a traumatic experience my placenta got stuck so they had to take me into surgery um and they had to take me into surgery sorry i'm just reliving this whole experience right now so they had to take me into surgery to get the rest of my placenta taken out and because i had eaten like i wasn't fasting or anything so they put me under spinal anesth anesthetics so i was awake this whole time and i just remember like reacting to the medicine i was throwing up um, so because I was throwing up, my stomach was contracting and I was pushing, um, and so I started bleeding and <clears throat> I just remember the, 
the doctors they were just like oh we can't stop the bleeding um we're gonna put a balloon in there to 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 try and stop it because they had i don't know they had tried some other stuff and because i just couldn't stop throwing up i just kept pushing out more blood and it was just a really big mess so I don't really remember the end of it because I was just so drugged out but I remember waking up in ICU and thinking like where's my baby you know like if if it, if it was a dream I guess or if like he did make it or you know just something like a miracle would have happened or something and I think that's another thing too like going through that and then having to stay in the ICU and just all by myself and just going over what had happened and just being all by myself like rather than being with my family and stuff he was born 19 weeks three days he's he was alive for about two and a half hours and then he passed away um i don't regret um not i re i don't regret anything that i decided or chose to do um, because at least I can say that it was at God's t God's will when he chose to end my baby's life you know because I'm not gonna do that oh far out so we ended up having a nice little funeral service for him it was like just our close family and friends because I had come out already um, that I had already announced that I was pregnant so that was another thing where I was just like you know like I have to now deal with people that I have on Facebook that I haven't seen that are just like oh where's your baby or like, how's the pregnancy going and that's why I was just like oh, I really shouldn't have announced my pregnancy but you know with every every mother that's pregnant that's the first thing you want to do you know you're just so excited you want to tell everyone you know you want to talk about your cravings and you know what you've been sick about and just talk about you know your pregnancy so i kind of regretted telling everyone on my social media because then i had to explain just randomly to people like oh my baby died well, I didn't say it like that, but, you know, it's, it was just awkward to talk about. Um, so we had a beautiful little ceremony for him. Um, we ended up burying him with my little brother. He was a preemie baby also. He was born at 24 weeks. And he stayed in ICU. Oh, I don't know if this is correct, but he was alive for two weeks and then got really sick um and passed away so we buried him on t my my baby on top of my brother and i felt i felt relaxed knowing that he was with my brother and that he wasn't all by himself you know in a cemetery alone and stuff um and I think after that, I don't know, I feel like I grieved, I feel like I grieved okay, because there was so much going on. When I had the baby, I was staying with my cousin and, you know, we were cramped up and stuff so I was in the middle of um, apply for houses and so it kind of kept me busy because I just wanted to have our own space so once we got into our own place um, I think it was like May, June, July, August it was four months and we were going to America so I think that was something for me to look forward to and I don't remember being too depressed you know and just crying all the time like i i think i handled it pretty well um considering you know 
yesterday had the baby in the, bar, in, in, in the toilet and stuff. After I had him, my doctors at at Bankstown, at the hospital that I was going to, they said to me, you know, just heal up first, take your time, <clears throat> and then come back in and we'll, we'll, we'll have to do tests on you and stuff. And, you know, I didn't go, like, to be honest, I didn't go back because I was just, I was just turned off. Like, I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't get any calls anyway. I didn't have an actual appointment set up for me. Oh, excuse me. So, I didn't feel like I had to go back. I don't know, I just didn't think I was going to fall pregnant straight away. I was just like, whatever, like, I just want to focus on me and my husband and just do us and, you know, so I didn't think it was a bad, a, a big issue. So, fast forward to 2017, I had fallen pregnant again and um this time around i was super careful i was you know doing everything i was still at the same hospital at Bayson hospital i did change my dps around i thought that it was a better hospital um a better doctor and i was seeing you know the best doctors in at that hospital at Bankstown. so yeah i was super careful I remember I was resting so much more I because I started working out um, after JJ I felt like my body was in a good place so I kind of just stopped working out I stopped doing everything I was like no like my baby comes first I need to relax and take it easy um, I found out I was having a girl um, and everything was good everything was perfect i was kind of going up to 17 weeks and i was just like oh my gosh like i just need to not do anything to pass 17 weeks 17 weeks 19 weeks and then 28 weeks and then i can relax because 28 weeks is your viable date for your baby to have more of a 90 percent to 100 percent chance of your baby surviving and being healthy and or his or her organs will grow um, if they are born at that date. So, so we reached 17 weeks and everything was good. Still had a lot of fluid. Um, found out I was having a girl and we were so happy. Like, I was so over the moon. Um, and it was coming up to my 19th week and i remember it was my nephew's birthday and we went for dinner and i thought i just ate way too much because i was cramping so bad like i just felt so low for pregnant mamas out there you know what that feeling is like like when your baby's just sitting on your pelvic bone and it's just sore so that's how i felt and um I thought it was just because I was so full because I had like ribs and like salad and chips like I just pancakes I just had everything anyway so we went home and I literally laid on like my head was kind of towards the corner of the bed and I had my legs up against the wall trying to just let gravity do its thing and because I just felt so heavy um and yeah so i was in pain that night and the next day i had three clients um to do with my friend and it was way too late to try and back out and be like okay i can't especially like because i was helping my friend out and i didn't want to message her and be like oh you're on your own like i can't do it because i'm cramping you know so i was just like i just need to get through these three clients and then i'm gonna come back home and rest so, um, I went that morning, I, I was still cramping, I'd still get really bad cramps, but it wasn't as bad, like, it wasn't like JJ where I felt like I needed to poo or anything, so I was just like, whatever. I told my friend after my second client, I was like, I have to go after this, like, I'm in so much pain, 
and I'm sore is that okay and she was like yeah that's fine I like, just go do what you gotta do so I called Alan and I was like please pick me up from my client's house we need to go to hospital because I just felt so like the pains were getting that they, they were increasing and so we went to the hospital they made us wait and considering I had gone through this a year before and I just felt like they should have taken it more seriously like they um they, they made me wait pretty much they were like oh we're just waiting for a midwife to come and see you so I waited and waited and waited no sorry not a midwife a guy a gynae so we waited for about two hours um in the emergency and we finally got to um got to see the gynae and he was like okay we're gonna do a speculum exam just and that's you know open up and see what is going on in there so they opened up and they saw that I had already dilated and that I was in active labor so I had gone into spontaneous labor my water hadn't broken yet but um yeah like baby was coming and this was a fr this was Friday afternoon early night because I waited for so long in the hospital um, and they told me that I couldn't do any scans I couldn't do anything because it was Friday afternoon and it's the weekend so yeah they, they pretty much said you know we can't do anything right now um, we'll put you in a room so you can stay in here and relax until we can get you in for your morphology because um, I was due for my morphology scan so they wanted to I don't know why they wanted to do that when they could see that I was already in labor <sighs> Excuse me. but yeah they were just like we're just gonna have to wait until Monday to so you can get your scan done and so I was pretty much in hospital again um, for the for the two days drinking as much water as I can it was pretty much the same thing as JJ you know elevated legs couldn't get up off the bed um, just just trying to hope for the best and it was Monday Monday morning and it wasn't even early morning like it was probably midday or one o'clock I had my appointment so like all of this I just feel like they could have taken it more seriously like if I saw them on Friday and you saw that I was dilated a little bit with a bulging membrane you could I, like you could have done something tried your best to try and save my baby from coming out because baby hadn't come out fully my water hadn't broken my cervix was just opened a bit so you could have knowing what I know now I feel like something could have been done but um I guess it was my fault because we went to the same hospital but anyways so um we went in on Monday for my morphology scan and <clears throat> They brought me down on a wheelchair. I'm supposed to be on bed rest, but they put me down on a wheelchair. So gravity is still doing its thing. You know, think like baby still could have been coming out even more. I'm like, ugh, oh my gosh, this is really annoying me. So I get in there, and um, he starts doing the scan and stuff. And you know, he's like, everything's looking good. Like your baby, blah blah blah. Like you are open but everything was looking okay and I was just like this is weird because why like no one's telling me anything you know like I know I'm in active labor right now so tell me the truth don't hide or cover up things just tell me the truth like I can handle it um and I knew something was wrong when he sent um you know the people that that will transport you to your appointments whatever if you're in hospital he sent them off to go get a bed for me to go back to the room he was like why did you why did they bring you down in a 
in a wheelchair when you're on bed rest so they bought a bed for me that I had to lie on for them to take me back not in the wheelchair so I was just like this is weird and then I went into so I was in a normal ward when I went back to my room it was in a birth in the birthing unit in a birth room like you know with the ball and a big bathtub and everything and I was just like why why am I here this is weird I thought everything was good and you know um so she put me on the bed and then you know everything was still kind of normal until the midwife comes in and she's like oh I'm I can't remember her name but she was just she introduced herself and then she was like um so do, do you know what's going on I was like no I don't um can you tell me please I would like to know and she pretty much just said well with your scan the sonographer could see your baby's foot in your vagina so my baby was like and I, that's what and then I remember saying that too because I was like I can feel something there like it's just right there I can feel something I feel like I need to like push it out or something and they were just like no 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 it's fine it was my baby's foot and so they were like, you're going to be going into labor today. You're going to have to push your baby out. So I was just like, what the hell? Like, who does this? Like, what kind of communication? There was no communication, you know? And it's just like keeping me in the dark. And so, I don't know. With this one, it was hard. You know, I was just crying because they're telling me to push it out and I didn't want to push I was like no like leave her in there like I just want to wait like she stay can't she stay in there for like one more month and then you know hope for something and then um yeah so I gave birth on that day um she was bigger than JJ um we named her Maya Lay. Um, and I feel like she was just so, she would have been so me, you know, like so sassy and just, you know, fierce. She, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to post these photos, but she came out and she was like this. Like she was literally holding her head and she had like her hand on her hip. I was just like, oh my gosh, like, these little babies like this can't keep happening to me. And at this hospital, like, you guys are just putting me through so much. So, I ended up giving birth to her the exact same um, date as I did with JJ. So, they were both born at 19 weeks, three days. And um, with that checkup, after Maya... Um, they told me that I have an incompetent cervix, which means that my cervix is weak and at a certain date of my pregnancy, my cervix can't hold the, you, my babies anymore. So I will need to get a stitch wrapped around to hold it close. So, um, so yeah, I was just like, wow, you couldn't tell me that like last year. I could have prevented this whole thing but anyways so with Maya because JJ was um you know uh, even though it was a small funeral with JJ it still costed quite a bit to to pay for his funeral considering it was you know a 19 week old baby so it was just like oh this is going to be a lot smaller we ended up cremating her and um I like that I like that more because I have her with me um it's a lot cheaper um and it was more it was more easier um to do that rather than to go through the whole thing with with JJ so yeah um So yeah, we within two years I I buried and cremated my two little angel babies and 
at that point I was just like no I can't do this anymore this is so stressful and just traumatizing and what did I do to like you know you start to think what am I doing wrong to deserve this like why can't I have a baby you know and I just felt so guilty and like it was all my fault because we were trying so hard to have a baby and I couldn't give my husband you know kids we wanted so many kids we wanted we would always talk about you know um, having five kids and, um, and just talk about like how we would be as parents and stuff and so that just dawned on me and I was just, like I think I took that one I took her a lot harder because you know it's like the second time around it's like what am I doing wrong like why why am I the five five percent out of everyone in this world that has to go through this you know um, and I think what helped what helped me was my support group on Facebook because it just reminded me that I wasn't alone and that there is light at the end of the tunnel, you know? I started smoking every day, I started drinking more during the week. My husband went to work so I was just at home and I would just start drinking because I was just like, what is the point? Like, if I can't even have a baby you know and that's the purpose of a female being on this earth is to is to recreate you know is to to have babies to hold babies and if I can't do that then what am I doing here like what, what's the point you know and because I am a freelancer um, you know those two times that I feel pregnant I had to stop so with JJ I stopped for quite a long time to focus on JJ even after I finished I was just like oh I need to I need to get into it but I don't because I'm just I just you know it takes a toll and so with, with Maya as well I, I I stopped with makeup like I just kept stopping and it's just like what what do I have like what what am I doing you know I want a baby the one thing that I want so bad in this world and like what I'm put on earth to do I can't do it what am I doing you know so I think I think that was yeah it was very hard so fast forward to 2018 literally I have been pregnant every year since 2014 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, I've been pregnant every year since 2014 trying to have my family. So if all my pregnancies were successful, I would have had my little 14 by now. But, you know, we're just starting now because I didn't know what I know now. So when I found out that I was pregnant with Iverson, I, the first thing I told myself is I'm not going back to Bankstown Hospital. I need to go to another hospital because like, I, I'm just not doing that anymore, you know. So we went to Liverpool Hospital, which is a good hospital for babies, for pregnant babies. Like they have a good um, uh, baby ward, I guess. Um, and so yeah, it was good. I got my stitch done. I gave birth to the healthiest, biggest baby, um, and he he was successful through the survival stitch. And so I got the stitch put in at 12 weeks, and got it taken out at 36 weeks, and it did too. It did so good that I ended up going full term, um, and yeah gave birth naturally so yeah I am currently 26 weeks so 
So I'm two weeks away from viability. This boy is so active and I I just feel him moving so much more than Iverson did. <laughs> and Iverson's very active, so I was, I'm just freaking out because I don't know if I can do with an active baby plus an active two-year-old, but I can do it, okay? We're gonna do this, it's gonna be fun. So we'll have to just take things slowly. I think I might want one more just for my to try for a girl, but you know the chances are it's very slim, so I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's that's where we're at right now. Um, we are so excited and can't wait for this baby to come just because I was in such a loner. Like he's <laughs> he'll walk around. Like I, I don't know, he's fine, but. I can see that he's just so lonely, you know, so I'm just excited that he's going to have someone here. Hello, good timing, I'm talking about yeah. you. Look, hi. Talking about us? Say hi. Hello. Hello. Say, I'm Iverson. I'm Iverson. What? <laughs> Say hi. What? <laughs> so yeah. Are you excited to be a big brother? Yay. Oh yeah, we had to cut his hair. It's starting to grow back already, but... Oh, it was so sad. I started crying. Hello. Because... Hello. Hello. I started crying because I was like, no, like this is my baby. Hey. And now he just acts like such a big boy. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hi, Ralph. Hey. <laughs> so I'm going to... Hey. I'm going to cut hey. this off before he starts screaming. And yeah, I will put more updates um, as we go along and I will keep you guys updated. And yes, thank you for watching this video. If, you, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Bye. Say ta -da. Bye. 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 Bye.